can see here my Rhodes part is just been recorded. Um, it's just MIDI rather than audio. So that means it's just control messages rather than actual audio and it's actually playing my instrument uh, from these MIDI events. So let me just play it back and we will see. Okay, so it's actually playing the instrument live and I've already seen just an issue there which is probably good for us to check out. That little hiccup missed a pedal of mine somehow when I was recording. I'm using the pedal to hold down notes and control the length of notes. But you can see it playing there on the keyboard. So that's just sending MIDI into this virtual instrument and playing it which means we can edit the MIDI events. So this is a good opportunity to have a look at some basic MIDI editing. Now before I do that, uh, most of you probably know this song. You know, it's pretty expressive. It's obviously recorded to a, a, a click track and a BPM, but there's a lot of pushing and pulling in the parts, with the exception obviously of the drums. But um, So we, we actually need to make some good decisions as we get further down the track about timing adjustments, uh, if we're going to make them. But here's a good opportunity now because there was a you know a problem when I recorded it that it missed one of my pedals and so this first chord the note is cut short right so that's not what I want so let's have a look then at editing this MIDI after the fact to edit it I can just double click the MIDI clip on the screen and that will open up my MIDI editor let's get this out of the way and you'll see here we have the same kind of controls that we have with audio and uh, we can use them in a very similar way and we have our grid spot slip same deal here that we can use to either snap to musical values or whatever so you'll see our grid value here we can set it so I'll just set it to maybe eighth notes at the moment just to um, you know, I don't need too fine a grid for this um, at this point. And I'll just use my R and T keys to move in and move out. Uh, okay, so we can look at this now um, and see these short notes here, which I actually want to fix. Okay, so I can just use the trimmer tool, which we know about when we saw the audio demonstration. And now I just click on, say, any one of these, and it, this will snap. Let me just put it on to slip because this is not, you know, this is a pretty expressive intro, right? I don't want it to sound too rigid. I'm actually going to leave the timing a little bit imperfect. So you see, you know, uh, it's pretty on, but you'll see, uh, you know, points at where things come in a bit early and so on. It's good for what we want here as long as it, the performance sounds right. And we won't really know until we take the click out because the click gives us a bit of a distorted perspective on... Um, how the part actually sounds because when we actually listen to a song we're not listening to metronomes behind it all right so you can see here i'm just uh, lengthening these notes just to get this change to be legato because there should have been a a pedal in here so if you look at the bottom of this screen here you see what are called midi controllers so if i've plugged a sustain pedal into uh, my keyboard which i have um, and I'm pedaling these notes, then the controller data, those pedal events, will also be uh, recorded and that will be uh, sustain pedal. So if I click it over here to sustain, I'll see that, oops, see, I missed, there was a, um, you know, a missed sustain pedal. So I could, I could just put a sustain pedal back in here, uh, but let me just show you lengthening the notes. Okay, so let's just play here and just have a listen that's better and you'll see the sustain event my sustain pedal took care of that little gap there as I changed chords if you've played the piano you know all about this
yeah so I hear that little flammy bit here which is actually quite nice i mean it's part of the sound of a fender roads i mean that classic sound that people didn't have sequences and quantizers you know in the 70s when the roads was around so um you know it's part of the sound and also you know obviously as i'm playing it that's part of the expressive um you know range of actually playing a part a super slow part like this is rolling some of the chords a little bit so you get a bit of a flam so okay i'm not set to scroll at the moment so you can set the window to scroll along like a piano scroll or you can just leave it set to manual it depends on the kind of work that you're doing whether scrolling is useful for you or not but anyway you get the vibe see i oh, see here see how early this note is right so it's, it's a little grace note Now, um, I'm not going to show you in this video, I'll show you in the video where I do some uh, drum programming. Uh, you can actually align all of these events to the grid, but for a song like this and for an intro like this, that would sound absolutely terrible, right? So you wouldn't want to do it because you'd suck all the expression out of the, uh, out of the opening. But you can uh, basically see how in this you can lengthen notes uh, and you can, you know, move notes around if you needed to. So uh, let me just, uh, you know, get that grabber tool and say, oh, you know, I wanted to uh, move this note along. It goes to a sort of a finger pointer when you're in um, this edit mode rather than a hand. And you can click on it and hear the note go, yeah, that's the note I want. And then just slip it in time. This will sound terrible. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do it again. This is not the part, right? Okay, it's going to undo that. All right, so you can slip them around. Um, you could, um, you know, click and drag across a whole range of notes and then do the same thing. So if I clicked and drag and selected these notes, uh, it's helpful that you can hear the notes. Click and drag across them, and then I can make them all later. Bit of syncopation. So you get the vibe there. Um, you can uh, multi-select in here and then be able to move uh, groups of notes, okay? And then also you can uh, hear them by clicking on them, okay? Uh, obviously you can also, if you want to, um, delete a note by clicking on it and uh, hitting the delete key. All right, and it's gone. Let's put it back again with my Command Z uh, undo. You can fully delete notes. You can also uh, add notes if you double click on somewhere. Let's find a. Oops. I can lengthen it. So I'll show you the smart tool in a second. Uh, but the, to save you actually having to uh, change tools. But I'll just show you this adding a note here for the time being. So you could add the, uh, you could add, you know, you could change the course um, chord voicing, you know, which is kind of handy. But you can see why uh, I'm going to show you the smart tool in a minute, why it's a bit fiddly having to go backwards and forwards between all of these tools. Okay, so I just, uh, you know, changed the chord voicing there. Um, by uh, adding in a couple of extra notes. So let me just undo that. 
Okay, so the smart tool, uh, there is a smart tool for audio as well. If you click on that, that gives you different behaviours depending on uh, where you are. So, you know, it turns to a finger when you're sort of sitting in the middle of the note, which allows you to move things around. All right, and if you're at the end of a note, it turns to a uh, bracket and allows you to um, trim the note. Okay, same deal. See how it just, just goes to a bracket. You can add a note by just double clicking anywhere on your pitch grid here and then. Okay, so the smart tool pretty much, you know, the only way you'd want to work in the smart tool, it's painful. It was probably painful for people who know Pro Tools watching me trying to work without the smart tool in the MIDI editor. So you just turn the smart tool on and off by uh, clicking this kind of area above the three tools, right? Or you can click on one tool and it goes to a single tool, click above it and it becomes the smart tool. So pretty much, you know, a lot of the time you can work uh, in the smart tool. I mean, I can't see why you wouldn't when you're in the uh, MIDI editing page. That's the, the MIDI editor, just the, the real basics of the MIDI editor. As I say, we'll get much more into this when we start looking at drum programming. So let me just close that window down for now. <clears throat> uh, when you're looking at the edit window view, um, you can actually also treat MIDI in the same way that you would treat audio. So, uh, you know, if I use my tools at this level, so this is the sort of the macro edit window level, um, the same thing applies. So let me get my trim tool and uh, I can lengthen or shorten the clip uh, using these uh, edit tools. Now, what's interesting there is you'll see these notes hanging over the end of the clip. I mean, that's just basically telling you that the note has been started before your the end of your trim. So the effect of that is that you're going to still get that note, or you should, let's see. Even though I've trimmed it early, it's because um, these notes, this last set of notes, you can see here of starting just before the end of the clip so it won't lose those it'll it'll when you're in trimming midi clips it'll basically keep whatever notes have been started at the end of the clip okay uh, and if you wanted to get rid of those you'd actually have to go in and edit the midi clip just to uh, either move the start of those uh, notes until they were not before the end of the bar or um, delete them if you were trying to loop something. So that gives you, you know, a broad overview of the sense that you can you can um, edit both at MIDI clip level um, by double clicking on the MIDI clip and going into this detailed MIDI editor, or you can at macro level if you've got parts that you're uh, pretty happy with, and and we'll have a look with this part in looping it, okay, um, rather than having to re-perform the whole thing. Um, you can, at this edit window level, uh, edit your clip in the same way that you can edit audio clips, and so I could loop and I could cut and paste, uh, I could shorten or lengthen and so on uh, as, a, as a full clip rather than being inside the MIDI editor. So it's quite well nested in this way. Um, and of course, uh, as I said uh, earlier, this is all running live, okay? So um, if I was to get my instrument back up again, okay, and uh, you know, I wanted to play with the sound at all, um, you can see I've got a tremolo effect on this at the moment, which is on the original. song for those of you that know it the tremolo is a musical element and you'll also notice when you listen closely which is something that I would encourage you to do uh, that the the speed of the tremolo on this track is not completely aligned with the tempo of the track and it creates a, a sort of a yeah, you know, it's this kind of languid feel it's slightly slower it's slightly light um, and you know that's a really important production element when you pay attention to these details particularly in a track that is so spare like this one 
you know, it makes a huge expressive difference, just the rate of the tremolo uh, against the tempo of the track. So, um, you know, you, you start to develop these deeper insights into musical arranging and the, the design of your sounds uh, that actually give you a very different expressive effect uh, when you're working on a track. So that's the basics of just recording a track uh, with an instrument and creating that track and then playing it back in some really simple first principles. Further videos will have a look at more detailed MIDI editing.